I know you're headed out to Denver, uh, where you're going to give the lunchtime keynote tomorrow at the Cannabis Business Summit. Um, tell us what you're going to say in that speech tomorrow. Well, actually, I want to make sure that people understand that uh, the true issues at hand when we're dealing with mar medical marijuana especially, but also uh, personal use of marijuana, that these are uh, things that uh, uh, make us go to our basic foundations of what we believe in. What are our principles? And those are principles, I think, that conservatives like myself understand or should understand. I mean, we've been talking a lot about doctor-patient relationships. Well, especially in terms of Obamacare, and uh, that should be a, a doctor should be able to prescribe something, especially in a state that legalizes medical marijuana. Uh, we believe in the Tenth Amendment. Uh, we believe in states' rights, but uh, and our founding fathers never believed in the criminal justice system to be run by the federal government. That should always have been a part of the state and, and local government, according to our founding fathers. So there's a lot of things, and individual freedom, not to mention that but uh, so there's a lot of things that I believe that are coming together now in the issue on marijuana issues that can bring conservative Republicans together with people on the other side of the spectrum or at least people who thought they are on the other side of the spectrum to get something done about this enormous waste of our resources meaning spending money that we don't have borrowing it from China taking it out of the criminal justice process in order to prevent someone from smoking a weed how stupid is that congressman you you have a personal reason for I know you've been a strong um, advocate for medical marijuana as anyone on the right or left um, what is it that ma made you an advocate you have a personal story that got you into this issue right well, for, <laughs> first of all, uh, it's philosophical. I am someone who believes in limited government, and I believe in individual freedom. And those people who use those expressions, uh, I don't think many of them have taken it very seriously, and I do, and I have for my entire life. And uh, so that's number one. But number two, uh, I, I understand uh, some of the sorrow that's created in people when they say we're going to arrest someone and try to help them so, and that will in some way stop people from using marijuana and be better for them and better for the country. That's just not true. We are wasting billions of dollars that could go into trying to confront rapists and murderers and terrorists and instead it's going after trying to prevent someone from smoking a weed. And uh, it, number one, that's a waste of money. That's number one motive for me because we have to try to find a way today to balance the budget. But also I can identify with young people if they get arrested when they're 21, 22 years old smoking a, a joint uh, and they end up with a felony conviction. Well, now people in the upper middle income and upper income, don't, that doesn't destroy their lives. But in so many places in America, the young people, they get a criminal record that early because their family can't afford a big lawyer to get them off and it ruins their life. And it causes a much, in the, in the long run, it costs so much more. Congressman, uh, we did a poll at Bloomberg uh, several months ago, and 58% of the people said they thought marijuana would be uh, legal uh, within 20 years. 32% said no. For that to happen, can it just be continue to be on a state-by-state -state basis, or will the federal government have to step in to legalize it? Well, I think the best approach uh, is going state-by-state, -state, because our founding fathers wanted criminal justice and this type of uh, uh, legislation to be done at the state level. But we got way out of whack when the federal government stepped in and decided it would uh, it would make the decisions for the people across the United States as to what their criminal justice positions would be on marijuana and things such as that. So if we got out of uh, uh, our liberty and our, our control of, of limited government, uh, uh, got out of whack because the federal government came in and superseded the states, I think you, you we can think back out that, of this the same way. Oh, back out of the same way. I, I was just going to quickly ask you, are, are Chris Christie and Marco Rubio making a mistake in saying they wouldn't permit it if they were president? Yes, they are, dramatically. The fact is, is that uh, even even most Republicans can see what a waste of money this is uh, when you're borrowing money and a third of our budget is borrowed from uh, China and elsewhere and uh, you borrow that and ignoring more uh, severe crimes and then putting people in in jail for smoking a weed is, is ridiculous and they're hurting themselves. The American people understand that now. Con
Congress By the way, I, I'm in a conservative district. I'm from a conservative district, and I can tell you, I haven't lost one vote, and I probably picked up 10% of the vote from people who say, well, Dana really is an open-minded person, because I have a conservative voting record. Congressman Rohrbacher, um, I know Rand Paul's going to be out there uh, doing a little fundraiser, I think, in Denver. I want you to make sure to say hello to him uh, and give him some advice about going even further than he's gone already on this issue.